Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, Those Daring Defenders, Episode 30. Yes, we're back talking about the Defenders, and the amazing Billy D is with me again. And we're going to be covering Giant Sizes 3 and 4. How you doing, Billy? I am doing great, man. It's been way too long since we have spoken. Yes, it has. Um, uh, life gets crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad. I'm glad we're doing this because I... Um, I just hadn't talked defenders in a while, and I there are um, and me and uh, Kirby, who comes on the show, we're talking about it because uh, that's his team. That I think that's his favorite team. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, I've like told him he's. I've told him I'm gonna invite him on for maybe a couple of those daring defenders because uh, um, he loves them and. Um, he fusses at me that uh, not fusses, but he teases me that you know I keep recommending all this stuff and it's all good and stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, like thanks for costing me money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so, but no, but it's it's cool because he's he's much younger than us and he's I've told him he said you have a Bronze Age heart, <laughs> 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 which is not a bad thing because I'm a, you know I'm a big Bronze Age kid, was a Bronze Age kid so, but we're gonna cover Giant Size uh, three and four. Um, so Billy, you're a big Defenders fan. What do you, what's your take on the, the giant size format? Is this a format that you liked? I, I remember it when they were coming out because th my brother was handing these to me when he bought them. I love the giant size. I really do. I wish they still even years later did these, these, these quarterly books that had, and even if it, I'm, I'm fine either way. If they tied into continuity or if they didn't, I'm fine either way because to me the content was so good, especially when we're talking about Steve Gerber. Uh, I can take it either way. Yeah, and see, and that's what I liked about it because, like, in Defenders, it, wa it was just an extra story. It wasn't really tied to the continuity. Gerber just used it to do something cool, mm -hmm. you know, and he would have different – he would have different artists working with him so he could do different things and just say where it happened, where – but – I remember because the first Avengers I read really was the Engelhardt era mm. and the tail air of his, the Celestial Madonna and the Kang War and all that was you would have three issues of a story arc. And then the big, big climax of that section of the epic was in the giant size. Yes. My and favorite the, era. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is mine, too. You know, 105 that from 105 to when he left, I think is still the best era of the Avengers. In a lot yep. of ways, just, you know, and even with that weird lineup with Mantis and Swordsman, I just I think I'm the only person in the world who loved that. But these Defender ones, they're always kind of like one and done's And like the earlier ones, they, you know, it was just they would have a framing sequence and it would just be reprints about the big three. Mm -hmm. But this one, the first one we're going to do is Giant Size 3, which I forgot it was Starlin. Mm. And yep. uh it's weird, and we'll talk about it. But let's give some of the permanent data, and then we'll talk data, and we'll talk about it. All right. So this is Giant Size Defenders, Volume One, Number Three. Um, it was published on October third, nineteen seventy-four. I was about to turn ten when this came out. Um, it's written by Steve Gerber, Jim Starlin, Len Wine, pencils by Starlin. Um, yes, the credits are different than it is in the comic. It's it. <laughs> Starlin and Wine had some hand in this, and I can see Starlin's hand in the plotting. Mm -hmm. very yeah. Pencils by Starlin, inks by Dan Atkins, Don Newton, which really surprised me, and Jim Mooney. Mm -hmm. Colors, Glynis Wine, letters, Charlotte Jetter, and editor Roy Thomas. Um, and the roll call for this lineup, this one was Doc Strange, Submariner Hulk, Valkyrie Knight, Hawk, and, not officially a Defender, but the sixth member for this issue is Daredevil. And there's a lot going on in this. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to insert the synopsis from Fandom Wiki here, but me and Billy are just going to continue to talk because we know what happened in it. Giant Size Defenders, Volume 1, Number 3. The Defenders and Daredevil are selected by the Grandmaster and the Prime Mover to participate in their latest game, in which the Grandmaster pits them against beings from different eras and planets selected by the Prime Mover to do battle. The winner gets the Earth as their prize. Pitting two of Grandmaster's champions against at least one of those of Prime Mover, the Defenders still manage to win, even though some of their numbers are killed in the battle. 
However, when Grandmaster wins, he revives those who were killed. Having oh. lost, the Prime Mover shorts out and breaks down, and the Grandmaster prepares to take ownership of the Earth. However, Daredevil challenges him to a coin toss, which Daredevil wins thanks to his heightened senses. Losing it all, the Grandmaster returns the Defenders to Earth and leaving all alone. Until next time, that is. That is the synopsis from the Marvel Fandom Wiki database. All right, that was the synopsis. I'll plug that in later. Uh, but there's a lot going on in this. Uh, basically, it's the Grandmaster and the Prime Mover are playing a little game of chess with these guys. What did you think of the story, just overall, real quick? I thought it was really good. I love how it started out with, you know, a hero on hero fight. And then uh, let's team up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it was like a recruitment that, you know, it started out with a fight. I love it. And then, you know, we got right into classic defenders action. And I did love too. I had completely forgotten about this prime mover guy. Oh, um, from, I, yeah, because it's from uh, Nick, Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah, and FF, I, 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 Doctor Doom, like, yeah, I completely forgot about that guy. Completely forgot about him. Hopefully, Professor Allen doesn't get angry with me because he's a big Doom fan. Oh yeah, well, you know, and I, <laughs> for, you know, I know him from, uh, from, really from Agent of Shield, and it is an Agent of Shield story with Doom, because their first appearance is, it, uh, Strange Tales one sixty seven. Yeah, yeah, I haven't read that. I don't know. I remember, wasn't he in like, uh. That's not the Starlin stuff, is it? Yes, I guess it is the Starlin stuff. I mean, that's Starlin, Starenko stuff, because it looks like a Starenko design. But yeah. it maybe maybe it is Jack. I don't know. But there's a lot going on in here, there because there's um, this is basically kind of a sequel to the Squadron Sinister's first story, the Roy Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, Sal Buscema, yeah, uh, arc, which I like. But this was good, and the. The Stalin art is perfect for this. This is, I think this is where he's starting to push the envelope with how he dr draws. Because he's already doing Captain Marvel at this point. But some of the, like when they're in the, the floating chessboard. Yeah, oh, that's great. Oh my God, it's, a, it's stunning. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm not sure why they inserted these, you know, long, uh, you know, uh, paragraphs here instead of just using you know art and you know but uh, you know caption boxes to show you what's going on and tell you what's going on but it, it, that is an incredible it's like a two-page spread almost like but it's really just a one-page splash and then the other page has a, almost like a half page of a pinup right yeah i mean i don't i think they just pl they probably plotted it so heavy that they were like okay well, that's like six pages of comic. We're gonna do it as a half a page in text. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they would do it. Uh, but it, I didn't bother me because it was neat to get some some of the notes and um, you know, some of the extra stuff. And there and I looked in here and there's no real note to why it's like that. You know, in the fandom page to why they did it. I was uh -huh. thinking maybe there would have been something about it. But the art's stunning. I mean. I don't think Nighthawk has ever looked this good in some mm -hmm. way. And I'm a big Nighthawk fan. Yeah, I love Nighthawk. He's he's a, a kind of a – I don't know if I want to say a lovable loser, but he's like a lovable mm -hmm. loser version of Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he is a loser. Yeah, he's a <laughs> lovable loser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you ever listened to Tighten Up the Defense? Mm -hmm. uh, the, I, I haven't in a while. Yeah, they beat, they beat up on Kyle because Kyle, Kyle and, and Barbara um, – Valkyrie's husband or Valkyrie's bodies, you know, Barbara Norris's husband for just being two kind of putsy dudes that just really have, would be in front of HR every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But I do dig that costume and he was always – he joined the team about the time I started reading Defenders. I think the, the Nebulon story was the first cool. time, first Defender comic story arc I read. Um, when he became good a good guy, it is good stuff, and he's really good in this. Um, so let's let's talk this lineup a little bit, because we're now in the the point to where the lineup is really Hulk, Nighthawk, Valkyrie, Doc Strange, but they bring Submariner, but they're still bringing Submariner back a little bit here. Um, did you? I like this lineup for the Defenders. I like it when Daredevil's part of the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love DD. He's one of. 
one of those characters that, you know, I do like certain periods of his and others are just kind of OK. I'm not really into them as much, but I do like it when he guest stars in other books and on other teams and stuff like that. I feel like those are really fun eras. Like he pop in and out of the Avengers every once in a while, which was fun. Yeah, and I really liked him here. Yeah, I just I'm reading, the you know, the FF in order for the first mm-hmm. time and I got to issue 73 and it's when Dr. Doom has swapped bodies with Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And, but it finishes in FF, but only one issue of FF, the one where uh, they battle Daredevil, Spider-Man and Thor. Mm-hmm. So I went and I read the five issues of Daredevil because it's like four, it's like four issues of Daredevil. And it's uh, Stan and Jean, but it is really just kind of generic Marvel superheroic stuff of that era. Yeah. And it's not – because I'm that way with Daredevil. Like uh, the first Daredevil I really read regular was the – I guess it's Wolfman and Bob Brown when he's in San Francisco with Black Widow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think – because I think at some point around there is when – or is it right before that era where Gene Colan was uh, on the book? Yeah, Cole, yeah, and that's who was drawn that what made those four issues really – I mean they weren't terrible, but they were just kind of like Marvel House-style Daredevil. Why is Daredevil fighting Doctor Doom? Oh, because he's – it's not – a lot of the stuff that in more modern Daredevil, the angsty stuff, isn't really in there yet. No, no. No, mm-hmm. and, but I, I enjoyed yeah, it. Yet. And it was beautiful though because it was, it was, it was Gene – uh, and Gene Colan stuff, I think I think he now is more. Re- I just think he's one of the greats of that era. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved he, I loved his Daredevil. I loved his Iron Man. God, I loved his Batman and anything he ever did. And Night Force is one of my favorite comics of the early eighties, mid eighties. Oh yeah, great stuff there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I like this plot, and you know, it's and it's a very team up, super team kind of plot where they um you know they assemble the six heroes and then they break them up into groups of two and they have a battle with people mm-hmm. um, yep and some of the i mean the art's just great what did you think of um the prime mover i think uh starlin really captures the prime mover i don't if someone else drew this i think it would not it wouldn't have been as good yeah, I like it quite a bit. And they do on uh, – I can't remember what page that is, maybe page 10. They do a three-panel uh, you know, flashback of who the prime mover is and what he's all about. And like you said, it shows Doom and Nick Fury and all that. That one, Literally, it, it's a, a three-panel recap, and it tells you every, everything you need to know about this guy. And I love the artwork. I think the artwork in this book is fantastic. Top yeah, I, I do. It's. I mean, I'm a huge Starlin fan. I was organizing books, and I had this Thanos thing. I, I think I just bought the trade. And it was, I think it's from the 90s, and he had that kind of dread to what he was doing, Dreadstar, and his art really kind of morphed into what is now kind of considered classic Starlin. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just great. It, it, he's perfect for this kind of story because he is the go-to cosmic guy. Oh, yeah. You know, it's him and then Giffen, you know, are the two big two that really are the ones that do it the best. But – and then on, on 11, they've got another, you know, six-paragraph thing – but that image of the Grandmaster mm. hovering over them and the Prime Mover is below, yeah. that's just a great image. I oh, think it's that's gonna be. I think that's going to be the image for the title card when I post this episode because mm-hmm. it's just so pretty. Um, but then, you know, the world, you know, the fights are good. I mean, you got Valkyrie and um, Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Yeah, and this is – I'm reading this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, they tried to make them kind of a couple and kind of gave up on it quick because it was kind of – I don't think it worked, you know, because she's thinking about him and all that. There's some of this, you know, and uh, that was a little weird, that plot point. Did you catch that? That Yeah, well, Kyle was always into her because Kyle's into every girl. Yeah, because he, cause he cause had, cause he's a dog because he's a dog, and okay. she kind of blew him off at first, but – yeah, she does kind of think like, oh, you know, I'm kind of worried about him a little bit. Like there's there's this tiny – not much. It's just tiny little bit by Gerber to be like maybe she does, maybe she doesn't give a crap about him. Yeah, it's just – I think it's just to have that Marvel soap opera, which I like. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I gush about that stuff. I'm covering uh, the Will Payton Starman for Opal City, and it's got a lot of that. I mean there are issues and issues of character development, and I, you know, I kind of miss that in some modern comics that – 
you know, what is this person's character other than the generic cutout heroic figure? Yeah. You know, what makes them different? Um, but I like this, and I also didn't realize until, you know, I read the credits, but this is Don Newton inking Starlin, and it's mm-hmm. gorgeous. There are a couple – I want to point – there are a couple panels, like in the bottom of 16, I can see Don Newton in that face. That's all Don Newton. I think he's fit, he's he you know he he probably had loose pencils mm-hmm. because there's so many pages, so that's why they have three anchors. Yeah. But it's wonderful. And then on the bottom of seventeen, there's this picture of her where she's thinking about Kyle, mm-hmm. but it looks like Wally Wood inked it. <laughs> yeah, that does look interesting. It looks like Power Girl. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, yeah, it looks like Power Girl from All Star Comics. Um, but this is a – I like this one. I mean I really I – really, these little chapters because Daredevil and Submariner, which is the weirdest teaming yeah. of the bunch. That's bizarre. <laughs> and they're battling the, the lizard tail guy and the splushy guy. I don't know what – they will all come up – they will all appear again later because mm-hmm. they are connected to the bad guy that Hulk and Submariner uh, – Doc Strange battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is Korvac. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Korvac. I forgot. Is this his first appearance? That's what I'm putting It is. Up. It yeah. is. And I it forgot is. about that. I really, it's bizarre. It is. It is <laughs> so, so bizarre that he's the bad guy. Um and and I, well, I do like, too, that they made this fight in some kind of, like, hell dimension where it's really hot and there's no water. So Subby, you know, he starts out like, you know, a ball of fire, <laughs> but he, he fades real quick, and they get defeated. I was like, wow, they got defeated. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that so much. I, th- yeah. I thought that was just great because it's a great one. And these all these sidekicks come back, uh, I guess it's in I guess it's in the Guardians of the Galaxy arc. Because they're the, he's the big bad in the Defenders Guardian story. I mean, it's been years since I read it. Oh I'd boy. Have, yeah. Um, I don't oh, know he, since I read that. Oh wait, I think he's in um, he's in the Marvel two and one stuff too. But yeah, because the the and Thor. I mean, he's been through everybody. I watch this thing called Marvel Mar- Marvelites. Mm-hmm. And the guy does history of characters. Um, and he you know it's got he's got he does a really good job. Mm. putting their timeline together based on and stuff that was like okay the beginning part of this was written 30 years after the character was created <laughs> you know yeah. so it's jumping all over <laughs> but he did one on Korvac and there was so much stuff with Korvac that I just forgot mm-hmm. um like they try to erase him from history um to or they try to do something to save him from being so angry and e- you know evil and stuff like that in the in the upcoming defenders arc and mm-hmm. They fail because the mother hates them for putting the child in danger. So she it just it doesn't do it doesn't change anything mm. because of there. But that but there's all this stuff. But it was just I forgot he was in this. I forgot this is the way he first looked uh, with the you know the eye patch and he's flying it's around like, on the on a box. Yeah, he's almost like fused to like a computer console or something like that. Yeah, it's biz- it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, and I do like the the. Um, the little the little guy with the antennas who has the power yeah yeah and he's beating the hell out of the hulk but the hulk just kind of waits until he's not looking and flicks his finger and throws him across the the area yeah the little guy he little alien guy he basically says that he you know used up all the energy he had to kind of have like a force field and like you know be able to knock the hulk out but the hulk's not knocked out and he just flicks him because he's like oh you just said you're out of power so the hulk's not that stupid yeah, it's really good. And I like how when they win, so the Grandmaster wins, and you see the Prime Mover definitely was programmed by Doc Doom because they're such a sore loser. <laughs> yeah, he says, you cheated. You cheated. <laughs> this cannot be you cheated. You cheated, you cheated, you cheated, you squirk. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Uh, it's, a, that's, it's so it, – and the Grandmaster, I, I keep hearing Jeff Goldblum's voice. <laughs> which is not that terrible it's a jeff goldblum's grandmaster is a very different grandmaster but the grandmasters are these crazy immortals and i love that he's going to keep them and on page mm-hmm. 38 it's just them there's this great panel where they're all lunging toward him it's mm-hmm. it's so good uh, so good 
and then he brushes him aside, and then Daredevil spends two and a half pages tricking him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I loved it. I absolutely loved it that he he puts an X on the head, flips his one of his little discs. I don't remember what those did. He used these discs for like boomerangs or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and he tricks Grandmaster, and they're like, "How did you do it?" And you know he can't tell him because oh, I'm so because of my heightened senses, I knew what side was what, so I can manipulate it. Yeah, he doesn't want them to figure out that he's blind. Well, yeah. They could figure out he's Daredevil and he's Matt Murdock, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's weird because I read that, like I said, I read that uh, Doc Doom uh, Daredevil story, and when they switch bodies, Doom doesn't realize that he's blind mm-hmm. in, the bo- in the body. It's like, dude, he goes, oh, it must be the the filters on the eye covers of his mask. It's like, dude, you're blind. Mm-hmm. How do you not know that? <laughs> How are you never figure it out? Um, but because of the heightened senses, but I like this. I think this was a really, this is a fun comic. Um, and for a giant size, it's really good. I mean, most giant sizes are good. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm the ones I really mainly know are the Avengers FF and Defenders. Um, I didn't read some of the horror comics because the only one that had more giant size man thing was the longest one. It had like six or seven of them. At least five, if not six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and Avengers was five, mm-hmm. and one of those was a re. Yeah, well, that was fun. Yeah, because there Spider-Man were Spider-Man too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he had a bunch, and FF had four or five, and but yeah, some of great. those and some of those weren't were all reprints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It feels. I feel like on like maybe the very last one. They had advertised there was another one coming out, and they just ran reprints because they didn't want to pay anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me. I'm looking at. Um, no, five were, is the, five. Yeah, five is the last. This one, Defenders had five, and it's all. The first one is the one that is made up of reprints. Oh, okay. And the second gotcha. one is the one with uh, Held uh, Son of Satan. First time he yep. joins the team. Yeah. Uh, because the next, we're gonna do four, which is the Squadron Sinister's return. But five mm-hmm. on that is the beginning of the uh, the Guardian of the Galaxy story. They actually use it to set up the next big arc. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. There were these two giant sized defenders. You know, the actual defenders stories were longer too. They were like forty pages or something like that. Thirty some pages, forty some pages. But they did have two backups in each of these as well. A subby Golden Age and the uh, Ditko Lee Doctor Strange stuff as well. Which uh, you know, I know it's, this is heresy to some people but that's that's not the uh, i don't consider that a high watermark for dr strange uh, in the least it's very repetitive i don't absolutely love the art either sorry you know ditko fans i, I love ditko but uh, i don't really love his art as much in that as other things like spider-man but yeah the subby reprint in this issue number three was great it showed how the writers back then in the golden days didn't give a crap because at one point he just has two guns and he guns down a bunch of hoodlums they're on their knees begging, and he just shoots them. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, see, I get what you're saying about because I had never read the FF from beginning to end. You know, I'd never done it mm-hmm. from one, and I yeah. found like the first thirty some issues of FF a little repetitive. Yeah, and awesome. it was written, and it's written for six year olds, which is what you know, six and seven year olds, because that's what comics were for. And as they age, we really you see it. Because I got to the point, I'm at the point now where in FF, I'm in the issue 70s, and since about mm-hmm. 650 or 60, once Coletta leaves, and I liked Vinny on Jack, because Jack would have cracked his knuckles if he had erased, if he had been lazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm reading his new guides, and it's good. But once Sinnet comes on, mm, yeah, it's like if within three issues, you the, what we consider the classic house style for FF has been invented. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, great even, team there. Yeah, because it, then it's John Buscema in Senate, then it's uh, Keith Pollard in Senate, then it's you know everybody in Senate up until Byrne has the book to himself. Mm-hmm. It's always yeah. Senate, so you get this kind of house style. But uh, but I get what you're saying about like I've read a handful of Silver Age, or Silver Age Doc Strange early stuff, and it is just basic monster of the week. You know, mm-hmm. and a lot of them are what, like eight, what, like ten or eleven page thing. When because it's a, yeah. you know, it's a half a book yeah. for a while. And I do prefer yeah. his, I do prefer Ditko Spidey over his Doc Strange. I do think he did a great job inventing the way the realms that Doc Strange travels in, because mm-hmm. he kind yeah. of he creates a template. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely will always give Ditko his due for basically creating the character and everything we know about him, or most of what we know about him. Uh, but it's just, yeah, if you read a bunch of those in a row, it's either the villain of the week, and like every third issue is Baron Mordo. It just, they really didn't want to expand and didn't really expand that universe a whole lot past. I mean, they did bring in, uh, oh, uh, Clea and uh, that dimension as well, but it just, I don't know. He never felt really, he always felt more, he was either earthbound or it was just, oh, I'm going to go to the pink dimension or the red dimension or the blue dimension. It was kind of the same thing if you look at it. Yeah, I think it's but it's what you're getting at that point because I just yeah, reading a lot of older stuff. I I got bogged down in my Legion reading because I got to the point to where it wasn't the main feature anymore. It was a backup, mm-hmm. and it was the same damn plot every two issues. Yeah, you know uh, because these are disposable. Mm-hmm. And that's an era where you're buying the comic off the rack. I miss going into a Seven Eleven seeing a spinner rack even to this day. Oh, yeah. And grabbing some rando comic. And go, Ooh, cool. I mean, I got my Crisis on Infinite Earth at uh, a 7-Eleven, to the last one, when I was a freshman in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, after a big party at the frat house, and I was going to 7-Eleven <laughs> to get a, a yoo and some hot dogs to kind of get my stomach ready for the hangover that was going to come. Uh, and, ooh, I got the last issue of that. And it was such a joy. My guys I was with was like, what? It's like, you can shut up. I'm going to sit over here and read my comic book. <laughs> and let this hangover kick in. Um, but, yeah, but they were disposable, you know? And it, I think until Jack, Stan and Steve with Peter Parker, you know what I mean? Because that's mm-hmm. where that great experiment starts. And I think it, it does affect your rereading. I'm rereading a lot of silver and bronze age stuff because I'm buying all the zombies and I... I find at times I have that same problem with other comics that I really like. Like, why? Oh, this is why. Because it had to be accessible to everybody. And your readership was like between 6 and 12. Yeah, yeah, and it, absolutely. And, I, and it doesn't, you know, I'm reading the Kirby now and I'm kind of, but I've always thought Jack was great and understood why Jack was important. But now I really get it because I'm watching it evolve. And that's fun. And now that I'm in the, you know, I'm in the, the this era where it's long story arcs and things are moving. There's that soap opera and there's that con- all that continuity. I, I love continuity going on. But yeah, I'm that way with. I agree with you. With, back to Doc Strange, that some of those are a little hard to read. Um, yeah. So what is your era of? Do, my Doc Strange is the Engelhart Rogers stuff, just because it's that's the only time. That's the first time I ever read it regularly. Yeah, to me, the, the high water mark for Doctor Strange was definitely Steve Englehart and Frank Brunner. You know, it was uh, probably only about a year, year and 15 months maybe that they worked together between Marvel Premiere and then when his own title started up there, the the actual kind of volume one with his name on it, uh, 1974. That to me is the best stuff. And I mean, again, Brunner leaves and Gene Colan came in. So that's fantastic, too. And then you had Starlin and you, you had so many P. Craig Russell. You had a lot of great artists and tom sutton was good too and oh god it's just, tom sutton i love tom sutton yeah his stuff is crazy good but it's just yeah that to me even the roy tom i even enjoyed the roy thomas gene colon tom palmer or doctor strange that was like it was after ditko had left and in those like uh in the area where it's like it, it took over the numbering for like i think strange tales or something like that because it yeah, was like yeah, one, yeah. 150s 160s it kept going with that and then it stopped. But that, that Roy Thomas stuff is really good, too. There's a lot more supernatural stuff in there instead of, like, you know, other dimensions and stuff like that. It's it's That's really strong material, too. I'll, I'll even take that, hold that in a little bit higher regard than, than I do the Lee and Ditko stuff. But, again, I, and I understand at the time the Ditko and Lee stuff was very revolutionary. It was very trippy. It was very awesome. If, you know, if that's what you read off the rack, you probably think that's the best. And I get that, too. And it laid all the groundwork. But just... I don't think that holds up as well. Yeah. Or I think I think the Brunner and Engelhart stuff. If you look at that now, it still holds up. Yeah. How do you, let me? I don't. It's been a while since we talked defenders. How does Gerber's Stock Strange in the team book? Because it, you know, a character a character has his own title and then is in a team book. Sometimes the team writer has to kind of just he can't do much with him. Mm-hmm. You know, and Gerber never wrote Doc Strange other <clears> than <throat> as in Defenders. 
Yeah, no, he never wrote that title. But I will say this. He must have either read those books or talked to some of those other writers because I feel like he I'm not going to say it was the exact same personality, but it, it was it was close enough that if you were a Doc Strange reader and then you picked up Defenders, you were never going to pick it up and be like, oh, this is crazy. He wouldn't say that. He wouldn't do that. You know, kind of like uh, Batman. If you're reading Batman in the Bronze Age and there's Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams and then you pick up a Brave and the Bold and you read Haney's Batman, people were like, what? Batman doesn't talk like that. That's insane. You don't. It's not like that when you go from whoever was writing Doc Strange to Gerber Defenders. He was close enough that uh, you just you didn't skip a beat. Yeah, he's a bit of elitist. He's a bit of a, you know, he's a bit snooty, but, mm-hmm. you know, he's got a good heart. I like Doc Strange, but most of my Doc Strange reading is really Defenders. Mm-hmm. And because I'm, you know, I'm just the team, I like the team thing. But I, I, I thought, I'm not sure I'd ever ask you that because that's your guy. He's your favorite. Yeah. Is he your favorite character, period? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm building, yeah, I mean, a, I'm building a shrine to mine um, in my apartment. It's Hawkeye. So. If you can, uh, if you ever see like one of those epics or something like that on the cheap, where it covers that Marvel premiere early Doctor Strange stuff with Engelhart and Brunner, definitely uh, grab it. It'll you'll, you'll enjoy it. I've been thinking about getting it in an Omni, and I don't want the Ditko one. I really was like, I don't want to read 300 pages of that. Mm-hmm. I just because I, I mean, I've read it and I've been like, it's neat in a backup, you know, because that's where most of those I've read is either in a backup and a giant size or an annual a yeah. print. And I went, oh, that's fun. But, you know, I've read some of that. I've read some of the the, the Engelhart and I forgot he did it with all those other people because he, he left and came back and did it with Rogers. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was gone for a while. Yeah. He went to D.C. and. That's when he did his stuff, uh, you know, the Batman stuff and all that. And then he came back for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I just read the West Coast where he Engelhart ties up FF travel to the Great Pyramid, Doc Strange's Great Pyramid adventure. And the West oh, yeah. Coast is all happening all at one time. It's like yeah. the, my, the greatest. It's like a big giant hoagie of continuity. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> uh, but no, I like him. And that's why I kind of like. And some of the uh, earliest Hawkeye I read was Defenders too, in a way. So, but he's mm. my. But I like to ask people, like in team books, why, how different did they get it? Because sometimes they get it really different. Yeah. And I know what you mean about Batman and those team up books. Um, <laughs> sometimes in any of them, the, I think Batman is the one who is. You have to take Brave and the Bold as almost out of continuity. Mm-hmm. You have it, to. You have to. But but it's fine because. It's it's Zany Haney and Murray Boltonoff just not caring. Let's yeah. team them up with this person. It'll be a fun story. Yep. And, and I do it, love Haney, but I totally understand if I was uh, a kid, teenager, whatever, reading Batman at the time and I picked up Raven the Bold, I would have been annoyed by that as well. But I didn't pick it up at the time. So, you know, my, reading it in hindsight, it, the, the continuity doesn't matter to me. Yeah. My, from Batman to that book. So my brother would have to hand it to me, go with a disclaimer is they don't know what they're doing. They're just ignore it. It's <laughs> fun. Just ignore it. Yep. Because I was big on I was that little kid making lists of who was in what book and trying to learn the history. Yeah. But um, um uh, oh, and FYI, I or I bought this week the first two Marvel team up epic uh epic collections. Oh yeah, that's great stuff, man. Yeah, I hope they do a third one because I, I, was I forgot how much cr- <laughs> I, I was thumbing through it and went, "Oh my god, there is some absolute crap in here." <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to uh, Giant Size Defenders Four, which is a yes, a very different, a very different monster than the one we just read. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just think it, it's incredibly different. One, um, it's got a great Gil Kane cover. Mm, crazy good uh, it is so good it's uh the defenders battling the squadron sinister and yellow jacket is the guest member and that it you know what i've been reading a lot i've been reading avengers inc and he they've done a lot to hank since 1974 you know what i mean they've done mm-hmm. a lot to not mess him up but just to change him yeah uh, he's been through a lot yeah uh, but it was nice to see him because for me as a kid he was just yellow jacket yeah. And until like I was an adult when they changed everything. But it was nice to see him. Um, but this mm-hmm. one had a lineup. Uh, this one came out on January 28th, 1975. Cover dated April 1975. Uh, it is written by Steve Gerger, Gerber, Don McGregor, 
And Roger Silfer, which I didn't realize until I was reading this, Don Heck pencils and Vinny Coletta inks. But we'll talk about Vinny because you have to talk about Vinny when it comes to art. Uh, Petra Goldberg, colorist, letterers, Gaspar Saladino and David Hunt. I would have liked to have seen David Hunt ink this. I think that would have been nice. Don mm-hmm. Heck never. Don Heck didn't always get the best inkers. Um, and I, I think he really would get, they gave him the wrong inkers a lot of the time. And edited by yep. the amazing Lynn Wine. Yep. Um, the roll call is Doctor Strange, the Hulk, Valkyrie, Nighthawk. Supporting cast is Yellow Jacket. Um, the villain is Egghead. <laughs> Hank's, Hank's arch enemy is Egghead. Squadron Sinister and Patricia Starr. And I forgot about her until I read this, that she had appeared in those uh, Roy Thomas Gene Colan issues of Defenders where right when Hawkeye became Goliath mm-hmm. and you learned that Hawkeye's brother was a gangster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was all I, tied up to that. So I'd completely forgotten about that character. Yeah. And she plays a big part in Defenders for a bit. She's, she's his girlfriend for a while until they write her out. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's... I want to know how, well, we'll talk about it, but let me jump to the synopsis from Fandom, and then I'll be right, we'll be right back. Giant Size Defenders, Volume 1, Number 4. When Kyle Richmond and Trisha Starr are victims of a car bomb, the two are admitted to a hospital in critical condition. Both the Defenders and Yellow Jacket, knowing Starr personally, seek out their attackers. Thinking it was his old foe, Egghead, who was also Trisha's uncle, Yellow Jack tracks him down and attacks him. He discovers that his da- this, the down-on-his-luck egghead blamed his niece for his misfortune and, while not wanting to kill her, wanted to maim her in order to teach her a lesson. The defenders, not realizing that Yellow Jacket had already tracked down the man responsible, try to locate those behind the attack on their teammate. The defenders somehow learned that the squadron sinister had returned from their last defeat and mistakenly believed they had been attacked from their former teammate, Richmond who, as Nighthawk, was a member of the Squadron Sinister. The Defenders are easily defeated and made prisoners. With the help of Yellow Jacket, however, they free themselves and defeat the Squadron. Both Kyle and Trish survived the attack, but Trish lost her left arm. Later, when they are released from the hospital, Trisha decides to end her relationship with Kyle, finding his life of superhero heroics too much to handle and not wanting him to feel that he has to stay with her out of pity. Again, another great synopsis from the uh, fandom wiki, Marvel fandom wiki. All right. So that was the synopsis. One, you had sent me a, a, a DM about how good some of the art looked mm-hmm. with Don Heck. And I think Don Heck's a great penciler. Mm-hmm. I Love think him. I think at times he was ill served by who they assigned to ink him. Absolutely, you totally know, agree. Some, some of his DC later DC stuff, it's rough. It's rough. He needs he doesn't need an assist because his his, his defend his Avengers because he was the Avengers artist after Jack until Buscema yeah. came on and For that a stuff's while. that stuff's really good. Yeah, like you said, if he it depends on his inker and then even before like the Marvel superhero age started. The stuff he did, Atlas Era, whatever you want to call it, where a lot of times he penciled and inked himself. Uh, that stuff's really good. It's really yeah. strong. He does action great. Yeah, I was. Um, I would like to see more of that. I saw they did one of those artist, big artist book for a guy named Manley from the Marvel Horror Era. Oh, Joe Manili. Yeah. Joe Manili. God, that stuff is gorgeous. I flipped through it at my local comic shop, Velocity Comics, folks. If you're in Richmond, go to it. If not, check them out. Yeah, um, I feel bad for him. He's another one of those guys I, you know, like Bill Mantlo, where, uh, you know, something tragic happened. Oh, what happened to him? I don't know him. So I believe the story is he was uh, in New York going to the subway and he had lost his glasses. And I think he had stepped out uh, too far on like the subway and got hit and killed. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Really sad. It's He's one of those guys that would have been a big deal if he wouldn't have been killed. He would have oh. been. One of those names. He would have transitioned for hard to superhero and had a huge career. Yeah, I've seen that Black Knight miniseries he did with, I think, with Lee, maybe. it's a, oh, Was it's that fantastic. the one that was in Marvel Special or Marvel Superhero? I think they put the in there as a backup. It was from, like, the mid-50s, mid-late Yeah, 50s. no, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. It's he good. Did, oh, my God, that stuff's amazing. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep, it's good stuff. Oh yeah, he got God. killed, tragically killed. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's sad, really oh sad. Oh, my God. But Don Hex art in this... For the most part, I think is really good. The splash page mm-hmm. where Kyle and Trixie are being mobbed by the press. Yeah. 
It's a beautiful page. And I think Vinny does, on some of this book does a really good job. Mm-hmm. But other pages, not so much. But the first no, three... I- the first three pages in the panel you sent me was from the third page. It's mm. the there's a car bomb and it blows up. They're in a lot. They're really in being intact as a little, you know what I mean? The car <laughs> blows up and they're not in any bitty pieces. <laughs> and maybe we, we, you and me being the age where I grow up watching news where car bombs and, you know, I'm old enough to remember the troubles in Ireland and you would see the car bombings in London and, Oh yeah, but this, and then during all the war, you know, Iraq and IEDs, you'll see pictures. When a car blows up, you're not gonna be you're gonna be in little bitty pieces. Yeah, I don't know if they could have pulled it off a better way, but yeah, like you said, that panel and even that whole page by Heck is fantastic. Like I it's, said, he he does action great. He kind of reminds me of another guy that I think gets the short end of the stick a lot, and sometimes that was because of Inkers as well, George Tuska. Action is great with those two guys. I just covered his four backup Legion stories. Um, mm-hmm. Yep, I, was, I heard it. Yep, and I was pulling tough. off – I had to pull off the Band-Aid to get through the last of that action. And that, But his are in Superboy. But his art, man, I, I will not hear an unkind word about George Suska because his action and the movement of the heroes, he won't put stuff in the background, but he's going to have them – He, you know, he's got that character like S-curve punch thing they do. Mm-hmm. Where they're like they're like leaping and punching that I just love because yeah. he was my first Iron Man artist. I was just gonna say anybody that doesn't think he's a good artist, check out his early Iron Man stuff and check out his. Uh, he also did the first uh, bunch of issues of uh, Luke Cage, Hero for Hire. It's great stuff. It's street re- level action, punching. It's great. Yeah, and he would be saddled. I think that sometimes with G- Vinny. Yeah, yeah, um, it's it's you know when he had a good inker for a while he got inked by I think it was uh oh uh, uh Don McGregor's partner there on Black Panther uh Billy uh oh gosh I can't remember the guy's name now it's, I'm drawing a blank but the guy that was uh, on Black Panther with Don McGregor for a while and then he took over Luke Cage for a while oh yeah the African American artist and I cannot remember his last name yeah I'm brain farting here oh uh, I know you're talking about it. he also did I think he did the first Black Goliath. Yeah, he was like, if not the first, one of the first ever black editors too at uh, Warren Publishing too. Yeah, but no, that art's amazing. I I've almost dropped the money on the Luke Cage omnibus just to get some of that stuff, and then to have it all because I've you know I'm a big Power Man and Iron Fist guy. I read that religiously as a kid, so um, I kind of want to get. But no, that's great. But this is some of the best Don Heck I'd seen in a while, mm-hmm. um, and. I think for the most part, the plot's great. I mean, not Billy Hawkins, Graham. Billy Graham, that's it. That's his name. Yep. I could. Bill, I, oh, it was just driving me crazy because he inked Tusca for a little bit, and then I think he took over art and plotting duties for a while on uh, uh, the, those uh, Luke Cage. And it's great yeah. stuff. Go oh, it read is. It. It is. There's, it a, there's is. an epic out. Go get it. If there's an epic, you can find that epic. Get it. It's great. Yeah, I want. No, it's out of print. They, oh. they, did, a, they did a second printing, and it was out of print in about a month. Oh. So that's why the omnibus is out there. I'm just waiting for uh, – they put a z- nix on our overtime. <laughs> 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 if I get some overtime, I may get that in the in the Iron Fist one because I, mm. I got the Ed Brubaker Immortal Iron Fist. That's good stuff. That's really good stuff. And um, uh, Russ Heath is in the middle of it. I went, why is – oh, that's why – ooh, Russ Heath drawing the 30s stuff. Yes, thank you. Yep. Uh, but no, but that stuff's great. But – the plot is, you know, the, the bomb goes off, um, and Kyle and Trixie are hurt. Trixie and Doc Strange shows up with um, Valkyrie, and he sits in on the surgery to help, you know, to kibitz. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like that, that you get to see him be a doctor. Well, you know, I was really, this whole, it's pages six and seven, really, where all that happens. And this really threw me off, and I don't know if it's because of, Many years of Doctor Strange continuity and different writers doing different things. Plus now in my brain is the movie continuity. And that's a lot more fresh in my brain because I haven't read some of the older stuff from the 70s and 80s. Well, I shouldn't say 70s, the 80s forward in a while. I wasn't sure. It, I, I had to ask a, a, a friend of mine on Twitter, uh, Peter uh, Sanctum sanctorum blog or I, something like that is his address on twitter but the dudes forgot more about dr strange than i'll ever know and i was like dude wait a minute like what's this scene about here where 
he goes to the hospital and he meets a doctor friend of his and the doctor friend asks Stephen to help with the surgery and Stephen says I can't my hands are messed up from the accident and I thought he had gotten over that once he became the Sorcerer Supreme and, you know, through magic means or whatever. Um, but apparently not because he, he can't do the surgery here. Yeah, see, that's what – okay, now that you say that, when he took on the identity of C. Stephen – what was it, Sanders? Oh, when he did, was was not the Sorcerer Supreme anymore? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he wore the mask, which I love that costume, yep. um, um, that he became a doctor again. Yeah, yeah see, see – I- Okay. I, see, I didn't remember. I, I'm with you. I, I mean, I knew this. I didn't. I didn't know where this fell in continuity. This is well after that, right? I, well, I'll yes. Oh, absolutely. Because that was Roy Thomas, the mask phase there. And then when Roy Thomas was transitioning to leaving that book, it was in. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, the book that led in from that. To there Defenders, was, yeah. Yeah. Or what was the bridge of a book where it led from the other, the old series of Roy Thomas to? Um, it was one of the anthology books that always it was had strange, different stuff I think it was in it. Strange Tales again. I think they just put it back in – I'd have to – man, that's really – I'm not in the same room as my omnibus because all those issues are in the Defenders omnibus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it yeah, all, yeah. It all leads to Roy creating the Defenders. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what I'm talking about. In there is when there was a story where uh, Steve, you know, Stephen Strange, Steve, Stephen Sanders, whatever you want to call him, he comes back to the Sanctum. To be like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be Doctor Strange again, and there is Doctor Strange in his house wearing the mask, and he's like, what the heck's going on here? And it, you know, it's a it ends up being Mordo. It ends up being Mordo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That those were super, kind of fun because I'd never read those when I covered them for the when I covered them for the podcast. I was being very complete. Oh, and I was Marvel doing, feature. That's Marvel what feature. I love Marvel feature. Oh. I love. I miss those tryout books. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, a lot of great stuff came from that. A lot of it. Mm-hmm. But I kind of like this that he comes and he saves, and then the Hulk shows up because his bird nose is hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Hey, where's my buddy? Who hurt him?" I'm like, "Let's go get him." Doctor Strange is like, "Dude, calm down, pump the brakes." He just put a big hole in the wall. <laughs> he smashes right through the hospital wall. Yeah. <laughs> Another great panel by Heck too. There on page, I think it's page nine, where Doctor Strange uh, is on the left. Uh, I almost said Clea there. Uh, uh, Valkyrie's on the right, and the Hulk is in the middle, and they're kind of like descending towards the sanctum there. That looks great. Great panel by Heck there, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I it, one, I like it's wintertime. They're getting there. Mm-hmm. Everybody's uh, just – it's just a, it's really well laid out. The great pan- – I like the ch- – there's some panel choices that he does with the two and uh, the long one in the middle. Mm-hmm. I just, I just really digging that. I've been reading a lot of Kirby, and there's a lot of four panel, one panel, but the one panel always has Galactus or Silver Surfer on it, so that's fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. But then we cut to non messed up Hal. Pitt. Well, I mean, he's been Yellow Jacket, so he's already had his first nervous breakdown. Yeah. But um, Hank and Jan here. Yeah, being very mod and very fashionable. I love it. The couch. Oh, look at the be- the, the table, the coffee table. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Looks well, like see, a dog food bowl on top of it, by the way. Yeah, duh, yeah, duh. Because <laughs> it's it's smoking time. They've been, you know, they're full of it's an ashtray full of cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I like, I like this part. This is before they don't treat Jan with the. Yeah. Jan hasn't become the great character she is, but it was neat to see. Again, this is continuity where um, it's from his Marvel feature. Mm-hmm. I've never read that stuff either. I would love to. Oh my God, you haven't. Yeah. No, I've never oh read my, that stuff. Oh my God, the art in that is absolutely stunning. He has this great Ant Man costume that is not the traditional one. It's more like um, oh my God, I just I'll have to see it. if there's a collection of it out or something like that. It's, I, I think it, there's it. an. It's I think it's in uh, the second Ant Man epic. They've okay. done two Ant Man Giant Man epics. The first one is all the the Lee Heck stuff. Gotcha. And that then. Um, hold on a second. My computer's about to run out of juice because I didn't plug it in. Um, and then there's the Marvel feature. Mar- it's Marvel feature five is what they're talking about. Okay. And it's um, where Egghead and all the stuff went on with Trish. Yeah. Here. Well, yeah. And where she's in. And I, that's the first stuff um, I ever read. And I'm trying to mm. think of the artist, but it's well worth it. But they tie all this in again. Continuity is king. And it can yeah. be fun if it's handled well. And when they were paying attention, oh, this is why it looks so good. 
Um, its script was Friedrich, editor Thomas, and the uh, the artist is Herb Trimp. Oh, okay, yeah. And I think Good it's actually Trimp and Severin. Mm, okay, wow. I'm looking at it now because it is – oh, no. he It's Trimpy Pencils and Inks. Wow. Did it, okay. I've seen some of his Hulks. I, ha- I have some uh, – uh, whatever the reprint title was that reprinted a lot of his Hulk stuff. Marvel's Superheroes? I don't know. Whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. There was a reprint title in the 70s that had a bunch of those Hulk stories where it was uh, – Herb Trimpy, and I, I think it's great stuff, even when it's him, pencils, and inks. It's really good. It's really strong stuff. Oh, no, stuff. no, no. I met his daughter went to VCU and was a friend of a friend of mine. I never to asked her about her dad because I was like, I'm not going to geek out. But she's, a nice <laughs> she's a nice girl. She's a nice girl, and she doesn't probably – is like, I don't know much about my dad other than he's my dad. Um, but, yeah, I love his Hulk when Severn was inking because that's some of the early Hulk I read when Gabriel was his sidekick. and. Yep. Yeah, some great stuff. But, yeah, check out that Marvel feature. But I like that they bring Yellow Jacket in, and it's really – this story is tied to his continuity. It is. Yeah, it's more about him than it is the Defenders. And 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 Egghead. (laughs) And Egghead. And I love the way Egghead is drawn in this. Who's a a homeless guy now, by the way. Oh, yeah, because he – because Hank Hank keeps screwing up his life. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good plot, and it's kind of weird. You got all that stuff with Egghead. You – Hank comes and sees how Trixie is. She's lost her arm. Yeah. And he vows to figure it out. And the defenders go off, and I still don't really. It was. It really felt that the Squadron Supreme was tacked on. Yeah, that was weird. It, I, I, it was a weird way to get them back into continuity because the last we knew, they were dead. Yeah. But they yeah. actually just went to another universe or something. Yeah, it's never really kind of th- – and that they set the bomb to, to hurt Nighthawk and accidentally hurt Trish. And so Yellow Jacket feels like he needs to defend, to, you know, rip, get, you know – you He know, beats Trish. the crap out of Egghead, yeah. Yeah, and then <laughs> – but then he realizes it wasn't Egghead because doesn't – he thinks it was Egghead well, and Egghead, it wasn't me. Well, no, Egghead says – he goes he, – he says, Egghead, you've got two seconds to convince me I shouldn't – Shove you sideways down a sewer, sewer. Start talking, and he goes, "Pimp." He goes, "Stay away from me. I've done nothing to you." This is page twenty-three, and he goes, "He goes, that's right, not a thing." But you planted that bomb in Kyle Richmond's car, didn't you? You tried to kill your own niece, didn't you? And he goes, "No, I never intended to kill her." But then he says, "I wanted to maim her," so he he did do it. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Because I went to, and once I got to the Squadron Supreme stuff, I said, "This is going great," and now why do we? Okay. Yeah, the Squadron Sinister guys there, they came back, uh, got brought back to this dimension, and they had no idea any of this was even going on. But the Defenders went there thinking they were responsible for it, which there was no evidence whatsoever. They just felt they were responsible for it because uh, Nighthawk used to be one of their, you know, group, and they were trying to get revenge on him, which they were going to, and they have some kind of crazy ray gun here, but... They weren't the ones that planted the bomb, but just it's a happenstance that the defenders got sent in their general direction by Nighthawk. Hey, this was the last place they had their hideout and observatory, of course. <laughs> yeah, and and it's kind of like they these should be really tough people to beat, mm-hmm. but it's it's really becomes a generic, you know, oh, you go to fight the bad guys, they imprison you, and then you get out and you defeat them. Yeah, Pim's so, kind of like the fly in the ointment that uh, gets them out. Yeah, yeah, it's really – this is a Hank story. Um, but – so that's up – because I like the Squadron Sinister and the Squadron Supreme. I like them both. I think they're great characters, mm-hmm. and I just think they're kind of just used as a pl- – they're used just as a plot device. Yeah. And, because all the other stuff is really good. The interaction with Egghead, the, the stuff in the hospital, you know. I feel like all that stuff was for – you know, the, the, the teenagers that were reading this or young adults, and then they had to switch to the action here for the 10 year olds. <laughs> when the I, You know, that's, I think that I think you're right, because like the last third of the book is just some basic superhero beating people up. The art, I think, suffers a little bit at times. It's not as mm-hmm. yeah. some and I don't know if that's Vinny or it's just it's rushed. But you get back and you get to the last page where it's oh, several weeks tough. later. That's a really good moment. That's yeah. a good. That's a good character beat where she's Sorry. like she can't stay with him even though he loves her, and he, you know, it's probably the only time Kyle's happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, she's really upset. But the whole event probably gave her like PTSD. Oh and then yeah, yeah. She and losing her arm, so she's just like you know I kind of need to get out of here to clear my head and and make my own head right before I try to be in love. And uh, like you said, Kyle's just like really busted up about it. And then she's such a great character. Um, I'd forgotten about her. I hate to say that. Yeah, um, I did too. I completely and, forgot about her. <laughs> and she first appeared in okay, yeah, Marvel Feature Five. She's a Mike Friedrich, her Trimpy creation. Mm-hmm. Um, she's made 17 appearances in the 616 universe. Yeah, which is um, a lot more than I thought. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, but she's in. Oh, because she shows up in uh, when Hank is put on trial. She's mm-hmm. in the Hulk. She's in the Hulk a few times, and she's in the Defenders one more time. Yeah, but yeah, she's in the Hulk a bit. I don't know why. That's yeah, that's weird. cool. That's actually yeah. cool to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, she was, yeah, she was. She, I think she was one of the witnesses in um, the Hank's trial for slapping. Um, oh, his abuse of Jan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I liked it. What What did you think overall? I liked this issue. I just found part of it a little just out of place. You know, the Squadron Supreme yeah. stuff wasn't as good as it should have been for using those characters, and they've been used so well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That- yeah, I like this issue. It was fun. I liked three a lot better, but it's interesting because I almost wish they could have swapped the Squadron Sinister into three because the weakest part about three for me was the the, the villains that the teams that when they broke up into teams of two, they had a fight. They were just like villains of the week. They were just like monsters, nameless monsters where – and they actually did have names, but you, you know what I mean. They were kind of generic. No, no, I get what you're saying because in the original – because that's kind of a sequel to – I guess it's um, 68, 69, 70 of uh, – Kang Avenger. and Grandmaster Yeah, Kang. Kang. Grand and, yeah. yeah, when Black Knight – and that's where Black Knight joins for one issue and then doesn't come back except for 100 and then when Stern wrote it. And yeah. It for decades. Yeah. Would have been better um, if the Squadron Sinister would have been the people they had to fight in that game rather than just you know those those kind of generic monsters. The only the, the really the best part of uh, those villains is you get Korvac. Yeah, that but that's was awesome. just kind of yeah. And then Gerber and Gerber, I don't know if he had planned what he was going to do because he's the one who uses him up until Shooter uses him in um, Avenger. Korvac saga, the yeah. Korvac saga, which I don't think is the best Korvac story. I think some of the stuff that happens after that in the Guardians is, I Better. find more interesting. Yeah. So, but hey, that's thanks for coming on and talking about these. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to talk to Fenders, and you're the go-to guy to do that because it's you, you're such a big fan of them as as am I. Mm-hmm. Love them. <laughs> All right. So hey, uh, let's before we go, why don't you uh, plug plug away on your podcast? Yeah, man. If uh, anybody out there is listening, uh, wants to check out what I'm doing here, there's, uh, you know, my main feed is called Magazines and Monsters, where it's, uh, you know, I started it as basically just to talk comics one week and then every other week rotate with uh, movies, usually horror and sci fi movies. Sometimes I veer off a little bit into fantasy, but usually horror and sci fi. And I'm talking classic stuff, Hammer. Amicus Universal. Well, a big focus on British horror because I think they did it best. Um, but uh, I also have, you know, a Zany Haney show that I talk about his stuff and Brave and the Bold. Um, and then I also uh, have a show where I talk nothing but Bronze Age horror comics as well. And that comes out every Monday. And the Zany Haney's every other Wednesday. So, yeah, definitely uh, check those out. I would appreciate it. They're fun, folks. I like it when he has me on to talk Haney because it's always a trip. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know, but. All right, folks. Hey, um, this is going to drop uh, relatively quickly. And as always, check out uh, Opal City Confidential. comes out on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, depending on what my schedule's like, every week. Uh, and I've got some fun stuff planned coming up, um, some Legion stuff and some other things coming up with some guests. So check us out. And as always, be safe, be smart, please be kind to one another, and read some comics. Read some Defenders. Defenders.